Welcome back to ECB Wrestling Talk, your main source for wrestling news and wrestling discussions. I am, of course, your host, Alexis Carrillo, and let's get into some wrestling talk. First of all, happy Friday to you all, and being that it is Friday and I've been talking about this throughout the entire week, let's get right into the pay-per-view preview that I promised, a pay-per-view that's going to be taking place this Saturday, Saturday night in Baltimore, Maryland. Of course, it's All Elite Wrestling Presents Full Gear 2019. And I don't want to keep you waiting, so the first match that I'm going to give my prediction on is the main event itself. The championship match, the world championship match between Le Champion, Chris Jericho, and the undeniable Cody. Where we talked about it just yesterday, yesterday Cody raised the stakes. He pretty much proclaimed that if he were to lose to Chris Jericho this Saturday night... He would never challenge for the AEW world title ever again. So, that put a lot of doubt in many fans' minds. Now, if you, again, if you watched yesterday's show, then you know I'm a little bit doubtful about this entire stipulation, obviously. You know, if he could just turn heel and go back on it. We've seen that done many times in the past, and it's professional wrestling. Nothing ever really sticks. So, with that said, I gotta go with Chris Jericho retaining. I just don't think Cody, being the AEW World Champion right now, is that great of a fit. So, I gotta go with Chris Jericho retaining. Although, there is a slight chance Cody might come out with the victory and just strengthen up this entire Elite versus Inner Circle feud that is apparently going to be carrying AEW programming going forward into the new year. So, my prediction for this Saturday is Chris Jericho going over Cody, but I wouldn't mind seeing Cody as world champion. So, what what do you think? Who walks out of the world champion and why? Then we have the AEW Women's World Championship. Now, I've talked about this yesterday as well. Rio has been a very good champion. Unfortunately, I haven't been as interested in her programs or in her promos or in her matches because I just don't find any character or storyline to it right now. So it's safe to say that her match against Emi Sakura, well, while it might turn out to be a very entertaining match, hard hitting, what you know, what women's matches have become to be, have come to become right now. You know, at the end of the day, I think Rio retains. And hopefully, we get the debut of Brandy Rhodes and Awesome Kong, or the return of Brandy Rhodes and Awesome Kong, and you can finally inject some excitement into the AEW Women's Division. But until then, gotta go with the simple, predictable, boring answer. Rio retains the AEW Women's World Championship. Then we got the World Tag Team titles on the line. SCU, the first ever tag team champions. Scorpio Sky and Frankie Kazarian face off against... The uh, in a triple threat match against Lucha Brothers and Private Party. Hmm, pretty interesting triple threat match. It's bound to be uh, entertaining. It's bound to be unpredictable because you know you got Lucha Brothers who've got a very Lucha Libre style to their action. You got SCU who were just crowned the first ever tag team champion. You got the Private Party. Like I've said in the past, I don't have cable, so I'm not very familiar with these wrestlers yet. I watched them through YouTube clips. So, gotta stick with SCU retaining. They just became tag team champions. And honestly, if it were up to me, I would not have had them crowned on Dynamite. I would have had the finals match, which was SCU versus Lucha Brothers, at this pay per view event at Full Gear. I'm just crowned them there. But now, you've kind of been booked into a corner where if SCU lose, even without getting pinned, it's still a ridiculous championship rank for them because I believe they've only had it for, what, 10 days if they were to lose it tomorrow. So got to go with Scorpio Sky and Kazarian retaining over Private Party. And possibly Ortiz and Santana getting involved after the match, you know, laying a claim for the World Tag Team titles. Obviously, the inner circle is going to be look looking towards uh, getting on the gold, getting on the power in AEW, so that's going to be a running trend on AEW programming for months and months to come. 
Then we've got the unsanctioned lights out match between John Moxley, Moxley and Kenny Omega. The match we should have had at all out. But we couldn't because of unfortunate circumstances. But now we do. And according to what John Moxley had to say during his promo, uh, I believe two weeks ago, the match isn't really going to count. The match isn't going to be, isn't going to count towards uh, the, um, the uh, records, the win-loss records. So uh, other than the fact that they're going to beat the living crap out of each other. And basically from what I've seen on the, on, on Dynamite, they have some sort of wicked re respect towards each other, some kind of weird respect towards each other. But that's not going to stop them from beating the living shit out of each other. So um, I kind of hope Kenny Omega gets the win because I think Omega has certainly been on the losing end of many important matches over the past year. I think he needs a win. Moxley, his character, the way it is, I think it'll he'll recover. So, yeah, I think Kenny Omega gets the win over John Moxley in a hard-hitting, beating the living crap out of each other match, and that's just what's it gonna, what's it gonna be. And finally, we got uh, Hangman Page, Adam Page versus Pac. Now, as much of a fan of, 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 uh, that I am of Hangman Page, gotta go with the bastard. Gotta go with the guy who beat the crap out of Kenny Omega. Gotta go with the guy who pretty much defines how looks will deceive you because he's a small, re relatively small wrestler who you wouldn't think could beat the crap out of you, who you wouldn't really be... Uh, you know, um, afraid of. But once he gets in the ring, he gets going, and he gets pretty damn vicious. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen to Hangman Page this Saturday Saturday night at Full Gear. Puck over Hangman Page 99 times out of 100. We've got Joey Janela versus Sean Spears with Tilly Blanchard. Gotta go with Sean Spears here. He had a match against Cody. I believe he lost that match. And, and as much as Joey Janela is a fan favorite, gotta go with Sean Spears getting the win with a little bit of interference by good old Tully Blanchard. And, you know, finally, the buy-in. I believe this is the pre-show for Full Gear where Britt Baker faces off against B. Pris Priestley. Again, mm, haven't been relatively excited about the women's division. That's just me being honest. So I'm going to go with the bigger name. And as far as I know right now, the most attractive character on the roster, character, Britt Baker, gets the win. I believe she goes by Dr. Britt Baker, MD, whatever. Yeah, Britt Baker gets the win. So that's the my, my preview and, the, and predictions for full gear. But that's not all of the AEW news to hit the spectrum uh, right here on ACB Wrestling Talk because uh, Dynamite and AEW might be getting a little bit worried with them uh, still having the upper hand uh, over NXT in terms of viewership. Um, uh, you know, it's been, what, five weeks already and AEW Dynamite has always uh, topped NXT in terms of viewership, although both shows have been losing viewers consistently throughout these weeks. Needless to say, uh, NXT started off, uh, you know, on, in September when they had just one hour on the USA Network. They did over a million viewers each and every single time. And then when they went up against Dynamite's debut, they had 891,000 viewers, which is, I believe, their biggest, um, their biggest, uh, viewership against Dynamite so far, but on that very same night, Dynamite debuted with uh, uh, 1.4 million viewers on their premiere episode. Pretty damn good for a, uh, for a product that isn't as well known with the mainstream audience as it is. Unfortunately for both products, you know, NXT's viewership has dwindled all the way down to 580,000 just last week. And Dynamite has gone below 1 million viewers ever, you know, ever since, you know, uh, 
I think uh, they dropped as far as 789,000 on, on the October 30th episode of uh, Dynamite. But now, it seems to be like, you know, NXT and WWE are closing the gap because this week's episode of Dynamite, the go-home edition to full gear, drew 822,000 viewers. Which, again, pretty damn good for a product, for a company that not very much fans know of. But NXT is catching up because they drew 813,000 viewers. Now, this may be the whole Raw and SmackDown possibly invading NXT storyline. That This may be Finn Balor getting some edge and becoming a little bit more of an attractive character to watch on television. This may be the fact that you had the OC compete against some of NXT's biggest stars this week uh, on on on, uh, on the broadcast. That may be the case, but either way, fans are tuning out of 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 Dynamite and changing the channel and tuning into NXT on the USA Network. So it's going to be re- really interesting to see what kind of numbers they bring in next week. With them just being so damn close to each other right now. Randy Orton made quite a few headlines. You know, other than the fact that he signed a brand new contract, multi-year contract with WWE. He's pretty much been going on Twitter issuing challenges to some of WWE's biggest stars and part-time stars for that matter. It wasn't so long ago that he issued a challenge to The Rock for a match, I believe, for a WrestleMania match. And, you know, The Rock's a pretty damn busy man, so I think he kind of uh, went a different way. He noticed a John Cena ad in a magazine, and he said, well, The Rock is the most busy man in Hollywood. John Cena's busy himself, but not as busy. I think I have a better chance of getting a a, a big, high-profile match against, in WrestleMania against John Cena. And so he threw out the challenge via Twitter, and I quote, I want to fly to London and see this striking young man asking me a question. Why, yes, John Cena, I am up for a challenge. Are you? Let's say, oh, I don't know, WrestleMania 36, maybe? Or does Hollywood have you booked solid? Now, John Cena and Randy Orton have a historic rivalry. It's been, I know, they started all the way in 2007, and ever since they've had, what, over 100 matches at least, over 200 matches at least, maybe? with each other, so they damn well know themselves pretty well in that ring. I think most hardcore wrestling fans and some mainstream wrestling fans aren't gonna like this idea of getting another repeat of Orton versus Cena yet again. Orton versus Cena for a 200th time. Orton versus Cena with, uh, you know, what, what else are they gonna bring into it? You know, they've done pretty much everything they can in terms of storyline purposes So, you know, if you ask me, Orton versus Cena at WrestleMania is something that should happen. Um, I mean, these were two of the guys, the the two guys that defined the PG era before CM Punk came into it. But these two guys were the PG era, or at least the beginning of the PG era. I wouldn't mind seeing these two legends go at it on the grandest stage of them all. Now, if you ask me... Orton versus Cena on any other Raw or any other pay-per-view event, nah, you know, just throw something else at it. But at WrestleMania, it has a, you know, a poetic justice kind of feel to it because, like I said, these are two WWE legends and deserve that big WrestleMania high-profile match that they did not get at WrestleMania 24 because, well, Triple H inserted himself into that match. So, at WrestleMania, I'm all for it. Corey Graves has been in the news quite a, quite a, a bit with his uh, After the Bell podcast, which, admittedly, I haven't been able to catch in its entirety. I have been able to catch some YouTube clips on it, and, and it seems like a fairly interesting podcast to listen to. I've, I've seen the, that uh, video where Triple H pretty much stated that he hopes to stop uh, sending so much uh, NXT stars up to the main roster without getting something in return, leaving NXT weekend. That was a pretty damn good conversation with uh, Corey Graves, but that's not exactly what we're talking about because 
because Corey Graves went on Twitter after this whole crown jewel tobacco that I'm not going to go into again because honestly, I'm tired of talking about it. I'm pretty sure U.S. fans are tired of talking about crown jewel. So I'm just going to say that, uh, I'm just going to quote what he said. And, you know, well, he said that if you're mad, if your flight got delayed and you were in one of the Saudi 20, that's on you. Quit crying about it on Twitter. You know who wasn't complaining? Randy freaking Orton. And if anyone has a cachet and the right to speak his mind, it would be Randy Orton. He got it. It was about doing the damn show. So he's pretty much calling out the the uh, WWE superstars on why the hell they're complaining about, you know, uh, being stuck in Saudi Arabia. Which admittedly, you know, I can't. Uh, relate to that because I've never been in that kind of position but at the end of the day they're still getting paid for being there even though they're um, they're stranded in Saudi Arabia they're still WWE superstars they're still in the public light they are still working for one of the best companies in the world in WWE so I get it you know I've been in many positions in many instances in my life where I would just want to frustrate, just want to, uh, you know, yell my frustrations uh, at someone on social media, in person. I've been in those positions, and I'm sure U.S. fans have been in those positions many, many times before. Sometimes you just got to hold back and wait, you know, got to be patient. You got to, you know, got to deal with it because... Life ain't easy, and, you know, you, you are stuck in Saudi Arabia, being a WWE superstar, being under contract with WWE, earning big money. It's not so bad. That's from my point of view. And then Corey Graves also stated that uh, due to the backstage uh, rumors that many wrestlers felt abandoned by Vince McMahon after, you know, he took off on his private jet back to the States and most of the roster got uh, marooned on Saudi Arabia. And he just stated something that I completely agree with. Look, Vince McMahon, I said it, I, I believe Tuesday or Wednesday on ACB Wrestling Talk, I, I said it, you know, Vince McMahon is not a babysitter. He's running a multi-million dollar company. Not just one, two, with XFL. He has other business to tend to. So with that said, just like what Corey Graves uh, stated, once the once the final bell rings, once the show ends, that's it. That's it. Vince McMahon needs to go handle something else because he is a businessman. He is not a babysitter. He is not a chaperone. He, what do you think he's gonna do? He's gonna, you know, he has some he has some power in his own companies, but he's not gonna come up to the uh, uh, to the airport and just. Uh, talk to the people in charge there and demand that, that his and that his employees get on a flight as soon as possible. That's you know he might and that might send the right message, but that's not going to help too much, I believe, and that's going to hurt WWE business more than it will help it. You know, at the end of the day, he's running a multi-million dollar company. I've also stated this in the past. I've seen I see multitude of wrestling fans online, and as much as I consider myself one of them, you've got to put yourself in his shoes, because wrestling fans think it's so it's so damn easy to run a multi-million dollar company like WWE, and if I were running WWE, you know, it would be higher ratings and higher pay-per-view buys, entertaining television, you know, hand me the company and I'll prove Vince McMahon wrong, and that's, to me, that's an ignorant point of view that's an idiotic thing to say because let's be honest you know the creative side of WWE the booking side of WWE is the what could be considered one of the least worrisome when you consider what other ventures uh, Titan Sports and World Wrestling Entertainment are in it's not just if you were to get in a, in, in a day as, as the boss of Everyone in WWE, it take you 10, 20 hours before you even get to, into a creative meeting to do exactly what you are planning to do. Most fans don't know how to run a company, let alone a multi-million dollar company. I'm not saying I, I, I'm not saying I can. I definitely can. But I'm saying that 
you know, I understand I put myself in that position. Every single time I tackle any kind of argument, any kind of news, I put myself in both positions. There are always two sides to every story. That's what I've tried to view every single time. Now, you may agree with it. You may disagree with it. At the end of the day, I'm just one guy giving his opinion, and that's it. So, with that said, let's head into these, this, the final topic for today's uh, Wrestling Talk broadcast. Where tonight we have yet another episode of SmackDown on Fox. Now, being that this is taking place from the UK, I believe WWE is taping both SmackDown and Raw tonight in the United Kingdom. So please, no spoilers at all for SmackDown or for Raw on tonight on today's episode. Please, I beg you. So with that said. Let's go right into the SmackDown preview. Roman Reigns, the big dog, collides with King Corbin. Pretty easy enough. Reigns gets the win over King Corbin. Reigns is the top guy on SmackDown as far as a babyface goes. King Corbin is, you know, heel father, for lack of a better word. He Sometimes he backs it up, but most of the times against bigger stars, he, you know, he takes the one, two, three, he taps... That's what he does. That's his role right now. Even though he's king of the ring, you know, his job is to be the heel that loses and then brags about, you know, still being king after losing. So I'm going to go with Reigns on this one. Tyson Fury returns to SmackDown on Fox this Friday. All due respect to Tyson Fury. You know, I know he's a big deal in boxing. I'm not a big fan of boxing. Not a big fan of Tyson Fury stepping into WWE. I'm not... So, and I think there are news that are the, that another boxer is coming to SmackDown. Uh, again, this is just another case of uh, Kane Velasquez, not interested. Tyson Fury, not interested. Shane McMahon, not interested. It, it's just not my particular form of entertainment. It might be yours, but I'm just going to skip over this. I really don't care about Tyson Fury or him finding a boxer, another boxer in a WWE ring or him having a rematch. Against Braun Strowman. I just really don't care. Maybe you do. But yeah. I don't. The Revival are set to defend their SmackDown Tag Team titles against the New Day. Kofi Kingston and Big E. Now this match was supposed to happen along with Reigns vs. Corbin. Was supposed to take place just last week. But with the stars being stranded, stranded in Saudi Arabia due to mechanical problems on their plane... Uh, this obviously did not take place. Now, you have the Viking Raiders on Raw. You have the Undisputed Era on, on NXT. So, this match could, e could pretty much go either way. Although, I do see it more going towards the New Day getting another title win. Because, I don't see the Viking Raiders being as big baby faces as WWE wants them to be. The Undisputed Era are big heels, and the Revival aren't that big heels right now. So they need a strong babyface team against the Undisputed Era. That's going to be the New Day. The New Day over the Revival, they become brand new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And I'm doing this, and I'm predicting all of this without uh, reading any spoilers. So, if I'm right, that's just me. Sasha Banks returns to face, I believe. Number one contender, Nikki Cross. I think she's still number one contender. Um, again, WWE Creative has a lot of work to do to build up the entire SmackDown Women's Division. Other than Sasha Banks and Bayley, there aren't much contenders for the SmackDown Women's title. So, gotta go with maybe Nikki Cross getting the upset. Hell, maybe even Shayna Baszler shows up. And Bailey seeks out revenge against her, and we get all of that. But after all, not too much to say about SmackDown Women's Division, at least from my point of view. And finally, we get to see the brand new top guy, the face of SmackDown, the brand new WWE Universal Champion himself, Bray Wyatt the Fiend, as a part of SmackDown. He's going to be leading SmackDown into the new year. I firmly believe that, and I'm hoping. They finally book him the way he should be booked in a very strong manner. We've talked about this ever since his debut. Bray Wyatt has the potential to be the next Undertaker. Not the exact same character, but the exact same feeling of him being a 
phenom, him of him being this larger than life character. And I think the fiend might be that kind, that that key that Bray Wyatt needs to finally stay and stick to the main event. Again, it all depends on WWE not dropping the ball and not botching it like they've done with Bray Wyatt in the past. But it'll be interesting to see what they do with Bray Wyatt next and who they pair him up against uh, for future pay-per-view events. Hoping it's not Roman Reigns. Hoping they save that until WrestleMania. But what's the uh, what's the other uh, what's the other option in terms of babyface against Bray Wyatt? There aren't much. They might put him against a heel. That that might be possible. You, you know, fans are have reacted positively to Bray Wyatt, so that's a possibility. But anyway, those are my previews and predictions and my thoughts on various topics going around on this end of the week right here on Wrestling Talk. What do you think? Leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions on the comments section below. And I'm hoping that you get to watch SmackDown tonight. I'm, I'm hoping it's a great show. I'm hoping Full Gear is a great show. Turning Point on Impact Plus tomorrow night as well. So we've got a, a weekend full of hard-hitting non-stop professional wrestling just as it should be for all you wrestling fans, and I'll see you back here on Monday. I've been Alexis Carrillo. That's it for me. Have a great weekend. Till next time.